Welcome everyone! In our previous Arcane Math videos linked below, we cover the strengths and limitations of analyzing damage per round, or DPR, as well as the principles of overkill, spike damage, and reliability. But what about mitigation? How can preventing damage from the enemies actually increase my ability to deal damage? In an easy enough fight, it can't. And it will only help save resources and time healing up after the fact. But in most situations where you really need to be the best you can be, when the going gets tough and the battle might be lost, then it can. And the reason it can is that it can keep your damage dealers in the fight instead of unconscious. Let's look at a simple fight example. We're level 14 and we currently have four great sword fighters in our party who hit for 35 and a half damage on average with their plus two greater striking great swords with two property runes. Strength and Weapon Specialization. We are considering swapping one of those fighters out for a Redeemer Champion with a greater sturdy shield and a longsword instead of a greatsword. The champion not only hits for 6 less damage on average, they also have lower accuracy to boot. How much damage is lost from this swap depends on the enemy's AC, but a worst case scenario excluding extreme situations is the champion will deal only about uh, two-thirds of the expected damage of the fighter in this situation between the lower damage per hit and the fewer hits and critical hits. So our team's damage output total has decreased by about 1 12th in that swap. In exchange, however, we can reduce damage. The champion also has two higher AC for a better personal survivability, but that's not true at all levels. The champion can reduce damage by at least 15 with shield block and by 16 to allies with glimpse of redemption. But with glimpse, the enemy has to accept either taking zero damage or unavoidable debuff of enfeebled two until the end of its next turn. This reduces the enemy's damage by quite a lot. The high damage for a level 17 severe boss is 38, meaning you can block about 40% of the damage from the hit with shield block or glimpse. The Enfeebled 2 debuff can be worth around 25% of the damage from the rest of their current turn and their next turn as well. So with Glimpse, they either lose all of their current hit or over 40% of a normal hit and around 25% expected damage through the end of their next turn. This gets a lot worse for the foe if the foe deals more than one damage type as Glimpse reduces them all. And if the champion has Divine Reflexes and Shield of Reckoning, they could potentially block one hit almost entirely with Shield of Reckoning and then do a normal glimpse on a second hit that same turn. Essentially putting the boss in a no-win situation unless they can manage consistent critical hits despite the Enfeebled debuff. The fighter could have had useful feats as well though. Even without feats, we're looking at essentially keeping the boss at a steady state of, as Linda said, either a permanent 25% reduction from Enfeebled 2 while also losing an additional 16 off their first hit each round, or else a 100% reduction to their first attack each round. When you calculate it out, that 100% reduction to one attack each round is much worse for the boss. So we can instead assume they don't accept redemption. Let's have Linda take a look at what that's doing. With the Enfeebled debuff applied, a high accuracy, high damage style level 17 boss has a plus 31 to hit. And your fighters have 36 AC from a plus 2 full plate and being experts in armor. That means the boss hits on a 5 and crits on a 15 for an average of 36 damage with Enfeebled applied. If the boss is attacking twice, without the champion around, the boss would be expected to drop a fighter in about 3 rounds of that routine. Add in a champion and you cut the boss's damage potential nearly in half between the Enfeebled 2 and the 16 resistance from Glimpse. That means that it would take the boss around six rounds to drop a fighter. So why does that number matter? Let's suppose your group didn't take out the boss after three rounds. Even assuming the fighter squad had someone who was good at healing, you have two options. Either leave the dying character bleeding out and continue with three characters from there, or have the healer spend a turn healing and the dying character spend a turn standing up and grabbing their stuff and getting into position. If you're very lucky and the battle is especially static, one of them might be able to pull off an attack on that turn. But in general, that's not something you can count on. And then, since we don't have a dedicated healer with super high healing values, the healed character is likely in danger of dropping again with bad luck on the boss's next salvo, leading to a spiral where you lose even more actions than just leaving the dying character alone. That means that in exchange for losing 1 12th of the party's total damage on rounds 1 through 3, 
The mitigation champion increases the party's damage on rounds four and beyond in this scenario by at least one third. This pays for itself in roughly one round, depending on whether or not the character who was knocked out acted before or after the boss did, but in truth, since the champion in this example didn't use any of their shield feats, they could have just kept the greatsword instead, which would have meant the party only lost 1 16th of their damage instead of 1 12th, creating even greater gains. Incidentally, at lower levels than 14, it takes less time for the boss to drop one of the fighters, and the minus 2 damage from Enfeebled 2 has a higher impact, so the mitigation strategy would generally be significantly more effective than it is here. Level 14 allowed us to show how the process works over the longer term, even in a weaker situation, and without using more feats to increase the mitigation. Now, it's possible your fighter squad might hit hard enough to end all the fights before they get to this point. But just like when we talked about spike damage in the second video, there's an important factor at play for the PCs. They are expected to win and keep winning over the course of many battles. That means that if there's a bad case scenario that only happens 10% of the time, they are virtually guaranteed to run into that scenario multiple times by the end of a long campaign. Variance favors the underdog. What that means is that the ability of mitigation to correct for that variance will typically be better over the course of exploring out all the random possibilities than simply counting on your high damage to clear the field before the situation can ever get bad. The PCs are usually the expected winners, and so they want to focus on reliable victories and mitigate the ability for their opponents to deal spike damage. In this way, lowering your own damage for defense's sake can actually increase your damage when it matters most. This completes our three-part series on damage per round for Arcane Math. The four principles of overkill, spike damage, reliability, and mitigation are not the only ones at play but we hope that the comprehensive examples across these three videos have inspired you to look closely at the ways you can model the math of TTRPGs, as well as at the ways in which DPR excels and the places where it fails to tell the whole story. Until next time, we wish you nothing but the best in all your games. Bye!